Section 12.4 Diffusion Shannon's second property is diffusion. The idea is that every bit or byte of the cipher text should depend on every bit or byte of both the plain text and the key. To illustrate this, let's go back to Del Estelle's Bifid cipher, described in section 9.6. To refresh your memory, the Bifid is a block cipher based on a Polybius square. If the block size is S, then each letter of the message is replaced by two base 5 digits and the digits are written vertically into a 2 times S grid and read out horizontally. Then the pairs of digits are turned back into letters using the same or a different Polybius square. Let the block size be 7 and call the letters in the plain text block A, B, C, D, E, F, G. Let the digits representing these letters be A, A, B, B, C, C, D, D, E, E, F, F, G, G. I have left off the subscripts because it does not matter here which digit is first and which digit is second. The block will then be... When the letters are read out of the block horizontally, you get A, B, C, D, E, F, G, A, B, C, D, E, F, G. Notice that each letter of the ciphertext depends on two letters of the plain text. The first ciphertext letter depends on A and B. The second letter depends on C and D, and so forth. At this point, I need to introduce a special notation to show which plain text letters each ciphertext letter depends on. If a ciphertext letter depends on plain text letters P, Q, and R, it gets designated PQR. Using this notation, if you enciphered the letters A, B, C, D, E, F, G a second time, the block would look like this. Reading these letters out horizontally, you get A, B, C, D, E, F, G, A, B, C, D, E, F, G, A, B, C, D, E, F, G, A, B, C, D, E, F, G. Since the order of the digits is irrelevant, this could also be given as A, B, C, D, a, E, F, G, B, C, D, E, A, B, F, G, C, D, E, F, A, B, C, G, D, E, F, G. After two encipherments, each ciphertext letter depends on four plain text letters. If you encipher this block a third time using the Bifid cipher, every ciphertext letter will depend on all seven of the plain text characters. For the Bifid cipher with block size 7, Three rounds of encipherment are required to get full diffusion. If the block size were 9, 11, 13 or 15, four rounds of encipherment would be needed. Recall that the block size in a bifid cipher should always be odd. In general, to test diffusion, you begin with each plain text character or bit depending on just itself. If the cipher operates on whole bytes or characters, you trace diffusion on the basis of bytes. If it operates on hexadecimal digits, digits in some other base or individual bits, you trace the diffusion on the basis of those units. For the Bifid cipher, the units are the Polybius square coordinates or base 5 digits. To track the diffusion, you need a way to represent the set of plain text units and key units as they trickle through the rounds of the block cipher. When there are just a few plain text units, as there were for the Bifid example, it works well just to list them. When the number of plain text, key and ciphertext units is larger, a more compact representation may be necessary. A good strategy is to make a binary vector for each ciphertext unit. Let's call this a dependency vector. Each element of the dependency vector will correspond to one input, either a plain text or key unit. The dependency element will have the value 1 if the ciphertext unit depends on that input unit, and 0 otherwise. When two or more input units are combined to form an output unit, their dependency vectors are ORed together to form the dependency vector for the output unit. 
To illustrate how this works, let's go through the bifid example again using this notation. Initially, each character depends only on itself. This is represented by the vectors. After the first application of the bifid cipher, each resulting letter depends on two of the plain text letters. The first round one output byte depends on the first two round one input bytes. So you OR their dependency vectors together. 100000 or 010000 to get 1100000. The second output letter depends on the third and fourth plain text letters, so you OR their dependency vectors together 0010000 or 0001000 to get 0011000, and so forth. The output of the first round is represented by the vectors. After the second round of bifid, the first output letter depends on the first and second outputs from the first round, so you OR their dependency vectors together, 1100000 OR 0011000, to get 1111000. The second output letter depends on the third and fourth outputs from the first round, so you OR their dependency vectors together 0000110 OR 1000001 to get 1000111 and so on. After two rounds of bifid, each letter depends on four plaintext letters, represented as. After the third round of bifid, each output letter depends on all seven of the round one plaintext letters, for example, 1111000 or 1000111 is 1111111. The output of the third round is represented as Any time an S box is encountered, the dependency vectors for the output units are formed by ORing together the vectors for each input that contributes to that output. Let's look at some other situations that may occur in a block cipher. If two units are exclusive ORed together, the dependency vector for the output unit is formed by ORing together the vectors for each input. The same is done when several units are combined using any combining function, such as SXOR or MAD. When the units of a block are transposed using a key, each output unit is then dependent on all of the units of that key, so the vectors for the key are ORed with the vector for each output unit. Suppose an S box is created by mixing its alphabet using a key. If the S box is fixed or static, say by embedding it in hardware, then the mixing key is no longer involved. If the S box is variable, perhaps mixed using a different key for each encryption, then the output units of that S box are dependent on all of the units of that key. The vectors for the key are ORed with the vector for each output unit. It is possible to express diffusion as a single number. Form a matrix from the dependency vectors for all of the output units. Each row in the matrix will represent one output unit from the final round of the block cipher. Each column in the matrix will represent one input unit, either key or plain text. The measure of diffusion, or diffusion index, is the portion of these elements in this matrix that are 1. If the matrix elements are all 1, then there is complete diffusion, and the diffusion index is 1. If the S boxes are non-linear, and the key is long, this is an indication that the block cipher is strong. Diffusion is not the full story. There are valid cipher designs where the diffusion index may be less than 1, yet the cipher is strong. One example is a block cipher where there is a separate key for each round. The keys from the early rounds may achieve full diffusion, 
but the keys from the late rounds, and particularly from the final round, may not. However, if the keys that are fully diffused contain your target number of bits, then the cipher may well be secure, and the partly diffused keys are just insurance. Here is an example that may help illustrate how the cipher can be strong even when there is less than full diffusion. Consider a cipher with 12 rounds, where each round has an independent 24-bit key. In this cipher, it takes 6 rounds to achieve full diffusion, so after 6 rounds, the plain text and the first round key are fully diffused. After 7 rounds, the plain text and the first and second round keys are fully diffused, and so forth. After 12 rounds, the plain text and the keys for the first 7 rounds are fully diffused. With 24-bit round keys, that is 168 bits of fully diffused keys. If your target strength is 128 key bits, then you have already surpassed your goal. The partially diffused keys from rounds 8 through 12 are a bonus.